Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I am going to continue with how to prepare the Honda Goldwing for a cross country trip. For my trip, I am going to pull my motorcycle trailer. But what are the top three reasons that will cause you to have a trailer breakdown on the side of the road when you are traveling on a long distance trip? That would be your tires, your bearings, or an overloaded trailer. Any one of those three components can cause you to have a trailer breakdown on the side of the road. So in this video today, I'm going to inspect the bearings and also we're gonna look at the tires. And also we're gonna do an overall walk around of the trailer just to verify that everything is in good working condition. Please note that regardless of the trailer that you have, whether it's a Bush Tech, an Escapade trailer, a Can-Am trailer, a Hannigan trailer, it doesn't matter of the trailer manufacturer, all trailers that you see on the road that are being pulled by a motorcycle have wheel bearings. At some point, you have to repack the bearings, so you need to verify with your trailer manufacturer how often do you need to regrease your bearings? Note, some trailers have seal bearings, but most trailers have greasable bearings. You either have to repack them manually or you can repack them with a grease gun, but you have to put grease back into the wheel, otherwise you will eventually have your bearings to fail on your trailer. The only trailer that I can think of right now that have seal bearings would be your Bush Tech trailers. The Bush Tech trailers have seal bearings, kind of like the front wheel of a Honda Goldwing. You do not have to repack those bearings. They are maintenance-free seal bearings. At some point, those bearings could eventually wear out, but the Bush Tech trailers have maintenance-free seal bearings. Can you think of any trailer manufacturer other than Bush Tech that also have seal bearings on their trailers? Be sure to put it down in the comment section below if you can think of any trailers on the roadway that are being pulled by a motorcycle that have seal bearings. But 99% of most trailers that you see on the road, you have to repack the bearings. I know a lot of bikers that have trailers, they're taking long distance trip, but they never repack their bearings and they eventually will have a trailer breakdown. So if you're pulling a motorcycle trailer, Regardless of the manufacturer, you want to verify at what intervals do you need to grease the bearings. So we're going to get into taking off the wheel. We're going to inspect the bearings, repack those bearings with grease. Also, we're going to inspect the tires, change the tires if necessary, and also just do an overall walk around of the trailer to just verify that everything is good. I'm going to use my air gun just to make it faster. Remove my wheels. So now that I have the wheel removed from the trailer and now I can take off the wheel hub, I have a pan to lay down my parts. I need to take off this dust cap, pry it around. Take my offset screwdriver and just pry around to get the dust cap from out of the hub. I'm using a bigger screwdriver. I'm just going to pry this hub out. To remove the hub, I need to take out this carter pin. I just want to straighten out this pin. 
using my needle nose. And I try to keep my bearings greased pretty regularly. I think for the Escapade trailer, it calls for your bearings to be greased every 3,000 miles. But I'll verify just to check. I'll check and verify. I'm gonna remove that carter pin. Take your pliers and remove that castle nut. I actually grease these bearings last year after returning from a cross country trip. But you wanna verify that you have grease inside of those bearings. If you have not greased your bearings, I highly recommend that you grease them. Otherwise you will have a trailer breakdown. Now I'm going to pull the hub. I have out the outer bearing. Pull the hub free. And I need to take off the rear seal. We're gonna take off this rear seal to get out that inner bearing. And so that's the thing about doing wheel bearings is that it's a greasy job. No one likes to grease bearings, but if you don't grease your bearings, I promise you on a long distance trip, you are subject to have a breakdown. I'm gonna rotate that hub around. Unless your bearings are sealed, you need to grease them. Take out the carter pin. Just gonna take this carter pin out. Remove your carter pin. Now I can take off this castle nut. Very greasy. Pull the wheel hub towards you. And now that bearing comes right out. Now I can remove the wheel hub. So I wanna show you what I got going on. This is the actual wheel hub that came off the trailer. These came off of the trailer and how you repack these bearings, you have to take the bearings out, take that rear seal out the back, take out that rear bearing and you have to manually pack these bearings, which is very efficient. But what I got going on, I actually, I'm gonna reinstall some ultra pack trailer hubs. It has a 1350 pound capacity. It's a four on four boat pattern. It's already pre lubed with premium grease. You can repack the bearings without even removing the hubs. And it includes the hub, the bearing, the seals, the lug nuts, the dust cap, and a removable plug dust cap. It comes with the carter pin and a installation tube for the dust cap. So, so in the future, when I'm ready to repack my bearings, I don't have to take the wheel hubs off the bike. I could just take my grease gun and pump grease through the Zerk fitting. So we're gonna take off, I can get this opened up. I'm gonna just set this to the side for now. Take that off. 
it came with the dust cap with that removable plug it came with the tool to knock the, the dust cap back on also in the kit it came with an additional seal so already installed on this hub is the inch and a quarter but we're gonna we're going to install this inch and a half i already know that the seal that's on here is too small we're going to go back with this inch and a half so this is a closer look at the wheel hub as you can see it's got a zerk fitting right on the back where you can pump grease in on this particular hub you don't have you don't have a zerk fitting you got the manually repacked the bearings so that's why i'm swapping out these hubs still the same four on four bolt pattern still still the same standard lugs but i need to take out the seal that came installed and replace it with the bigger seal in the kit so i'm going to take the seal removal tool and i'm going to take out this seal and just barely I can put it in the vise. I'm trying to keep from tearing up the seal. All right. That's th that seal is still good. I didn't tear it up. But if you look at the seals, the inner diameter on this one is wider. This one is smaller. So this is an inch and a quarter. This is an inch and a half. So I'm going to take that seal just gonna take some of this grease that's already in this seal and I'm gonna put it inside of this okay now we can put this seal as you can see if you look inside those barons already came already packed inside of the hub so I don't have to manually pack them now I'm just gonna take my rubber mallet So anytime that I want to pack the bearings, I can just take my Zerk fitting, snap it onto the back, and push grease in with my grease gun. It'll be a lot easier than manually packing. It's gonna be a lot easier than manually packing the bearings. And it also came with a new carter pin. I'm just gonna take my R2 to remove the wheel lugs. And now I'm ready to install the new hub onto the Escapade trailer. So to install the new hub, I'm gonna wipe on some grease onto the axle. I'm going to take my new hub and just slide it onto the, the spindle. Next, I can take my flat washer, take my castle nut, Next, I'm going to tighten down on the castle nut just to make the barren seat. Let's tighten it down and back off on the castle nut. Back off. Still a little bit too tight. You don't want that castle nut too tight.
put in the new carter pin. Just gonna bend that carter pin over on itself. Bend the other side. gonna just lift out on the seal I'm going to put in the inch and a half seal Careful not to tear up the seal. Take some grease, put it along the shaft. Take my wheel hub. As you can see, it has a grease fitting on the end where I can pump in grease. Slide it onto the shaft. I'll take that grease. And that's the thing about doing bearings, it's a greasy job. Lots of grease. But it's best to do this at home opposed to getting stranded out on the side of the road. Press in on that barrel nice and even. Take my flat washer. Push it in. Turn my castle nut. Until it seats. Tighten it down until it seats. Then back off on the castle nut. Next, I could take my dust cap, put on my dust cap, and now I have greasable hubs on my trailer. So the thing about these tires, it's not like they're pulling, they're just rolling down the road. These tires actually 
don't look bad. I could probably get a lot more miles out of these tires, but I'm very, I'm very anal about my tires. I don't like slick tires. So I actually picked up some new tires. These are 4.80 by 12s, 4.80 by 12. And I think I'm going to just change out these tires. Now the average person would probably ride these tires until they just get slick. But since I'm riding across country, I want to make sure that I don't have any problems whatsoever. Now you can do everything you can to try to prevent uh, a breakdown, but things can happen, but you want to do everything in your power um, to just prevent your trailer from breaking down. So I think I'm going to change out these tires, even though they look pretty good. And this is a four ply. The sidewall is a two ply. I will include a link in the description of the video or where you can pick up these tires. So we're going to take off the tires and I'm going to put in some balancing beads. So let's get these wheels dismounted and we're going to get new tires installed on these rims for the Escapade trailer. So we're going to put on this new tire. So I'm going to add in my balancing beads. Release the tire. Release the tire. And that's how you mount a tire for the motorcycle pull behind trailer.
check your coupler on your trailer make sure that your coupler is not broken also you want to make sure that when you connect it to your bike that you put something through the coupler like a coupler lock just to prevent the coupler from coming off of the off of the ball the last thing you want is to be riding down the road and your ball and your coupler come loose so if you can see you got a hole there you want to put something in that hole preferably a, a coupler lock you can put a zip tie or a bolt temporarily but you want to make sure that you got some to prevent that coupler from bouncing up and coming loose when you're running down the road so check your coupler also you want to check your wiring make sure that your wiring is good on your trailer as well make sure that your wires are not cut or broken you don't want to cause a short circuit and your lights go out at nighttime so you want to make sure that you got good wiring on your trailer as well also you want to check the chains make sure that your chains are good make sure that your chains are not broken make sure that all your hooks are there make sure that nothing is bent or broken and when you have the the wheels off and also you want to check to make sure that you don't have any cracks around the wheels because the last thing you want is for your wheel shearing off while you're going down the road because your trailer is overloaded so check your wheels check the frame make sure that the frame isn't bent check the bolts on your suspension make sure that you're not missing any bolts also it's a good idea to check the rubber bushings on your suspension make sure that your rubber bushings are there you want to do an overall good look check underneath and make sure that your frame isn't cracked make sure that your frame isn't bent and you want to check on both sides you want to check this on both sides so when you have the wheel off on the trailer that's the best time to do your inspection while you have the wheels off check check the other side when you have the wheel off check your suspension check your frame make sure that you don't have any broken wheels i actually um thought i had the camera on when i was checking everything but the heat keep killing my camera so i, I was actually talking and the camera wasn't even on but i had the wheel off just trying to show you guys what to check i'm not going to take the wheels back off it's hot and i just want you to know that when you have this wheel off check your frame check your bolts check your wheels check your rubber bushings check your your wheels make sure you don't you don't have anything cracked or bent so now we're ready to put the trailer back onto the Honda Goldwing. Make sure all of your marker lights, your clearance lights are working on your trailer. It's best if you have another set of hands, someone that can apply the brakes.